What is up, Stacking Ohana? This is Aloha Stacker, and welcome back to the channel. And in today's episode, we're going to be doing our segment for History Mondays. And we're going to be talking about West Point, the United States Army's Military Academy located in West Point, New York. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to show off something really cool that uh, my father found and brought to me on his last visit. And this is pretty cool. Check this out. This is the California Collection. Let me zoom in on the coin. And I bought this on a trip I made when I was in fourth grade up to the state capital of California at Sacramento, because in fourth grade we studied California history, and this would have been back in the mid 80s, so of course I'm kind of an older guy. <laughs> but the cool thing was is that we actually went out to where the California Gold Rush was at, at Sutter's Mill and the Sutter's Fort, and uh, we got to do some gold panning, and I bought this really cool coin for my father on the trip. And I wrote to him, this is for all the gratitude you have given me. I love you, dad. And he still had it all these years later. And he brought it back and gave it to me to, to hold since he knew that I was uh, doing all this this coin stuff. And I and he thought, man, you know, he had no reason to hold it anymore. He said, hey, you know what? You take it. Uh, it'll be better with you. And and uh, it, it's really cool. And it comes in this uh, little card. And on this side, you have, it says the California collection. And you've got the grizzly bear. The California, I think that's the golden poppy and the, uh, I think it's the quail, the California quail. So that's the state bird, the state plant, and the state animal, right? So so that's pretty cool. And then on this side, you have the gold miner panning for gold and an actual little piece of gold inside the coin. So that is really neat. And it actually comes out, you can actually take the coin out of the uh, case. So see that there? See the detail on that? Now, this is a clad coin as far as I know. I do not know, to be honest, you know, let's see. I guess let's find out. Let's do a let's do a quick test and see if it's magnetic. <laughs> out of curiosity. No, well, it doesn't move like silver, so yeah, it's definitely not silver. <laughs> so it's not magnetic, but it, at the same time, it's not uh, moving slowly like silver would down the uh, down the slide. So, but it has a beautiful coin. Look at the background there. I mean, it just encompasses what it was like as a gold gold miner, or gold panner. Back in the 1800s, uh, I think it was like 1849, right? Because that's where 49ers come from in San Francisco. The 49ers, 1849, were the people that came for the California Gold Rush. So this is a really cool coin. I just wanted to show everybody because I just thought it was so neat. And when he when he showed it to me, I was like, man, I can't believe I completely, I forgot about that, you know. And then, but it reminded me of the trip and and the good times that I had, you know. I flew up. I we flew up there from Southern California on you know just the class with chaperones and everything, and it was just it was really cool. And it brought back a lot of memories that I completely forgotten. So that is pretty. So that is pretty neat. Now, today's episode, we're actually talking about West Point, right? So the United States Mint 2002 United States Military Academy Bicentennial Commemorative Coin. And it comes in this really nice box. And as you can see, you've got the uh, logo for West Point. I think they're the, uh, looks like, are those Spartans or Knights? I think they're the Golden Knights. Spartans, maybe? Well, I think they're Spartans. But uh, let's go ahead and take it out of the box. Inside the box, you have the outer box. Inside the outer box, you got the inner box, <laughs> got the certificate of authenticity. We'll go after that in a second. I just want to give you a quick brief of the coin, and then it's inside here. So it comes in this beautiful case, and inside here we have the coin. So let's go ahead and do a quick zoom up so you can see how awesome the coin is. Let me, let me actually get it out of here so you can check this out. Look at that. And I'll go over uh, the, the coin uh, through the uh, certificate of authenticity. We'll have the uh, all the information, but check that out. So that's what the coin looks like, just to give you a brief thing, and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and show you the uh, certificate of authenticity right here. Let's go ahead and just get that nice and clear. So it's a 2002 United States Military Academy bicentennial commemorative coin, the proof silver dollar. So it's .7734, just like a Morgan silver dollar. All right, let's go ahead and make this a little bit clearer so you can see. So here's the information. I'll leave it hanging here. I'm not going to read all this. Uh, if you want to pause it and read it, that's totally cool. Uh, then after this, it shows the weight, diameter, composition. Mintage limit says 500,000, but really, they only made 288,293 proofs, 103,201 brilliant uncirculated for a total of 391,494. So they never reached the mintage limit. Uh, the designers of the obverse was uh, James Farrell, and the reverse was John Mercanti. And all of you know, coin collectors know that John Mercanti has designed many of our many of our really nice coins. So. Uh, that's just some of the information. It doesn't talk about the coin itself there, but it says on the obverse, it depicts a color guard in parade exercise with Military Academy, Washington Hall, and Cadet Chapel in the background. And on the reverse, it features the West Point Bicentennial logo. So let's go ahead and pull that back up real quick so you can, so you can see. Let's 
go ahead and get that clear. Okay, there you go. And uh, so obverse right here depicts a cadet color guard in parade exercise with the military academies, Washington Hall, and cadet chapel in the background. So that's pretty nice. You could tell, you could totally tell that. And then you flip it, just like you would flip a silver dollar. And it says features the West Point Bicentennial logo. So that's the Bicentennial logo of West Point. So 2002, 200th anniversary. Man, we're already 19 years beyond that. That's crazy. So 219 years now. So anybody going to West Point will know that they're 219 years old. That's about it for the certificate of authenticity. Now let me go ahead and read to you a really, let me go ahead, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit for a second, everyone, just so we can, uh, let me see if we can, how clear we can make that. If we can't make it clear, we'll zoom back in. There we go, we'll just keep it clear. Anyway, so here we go. So I'm gonna read to you a little brief history of West Point itself. So hopefully I can keep this steady while I do it. Here we go. A brief history of West Point, and this is from the, U the West Point actual website. West Point's role in our nation's history dates back to the Revolutionary War, when both sides realized the, the strategic importance of the commanding plateau on the west bank of the Hudson River. General George Washington considered West Point to be the most important strategic position in America. Washington personally selected Thaddeus Kazuyuzuko, one of the heroes of Saratoga, to design the fortifications for West Point in 1778, and Washington transferred his headquarters to West Point in 1779. Continental soldiers built forts, batteries, and redoubts, and extended a 150-ton iron chain across the Hudson to control river traffic. Fortress West Point was never captured by the British, despite Benedict Arnold's treason. West Point is one of the oldest continuously occupied military posts in America. Several soldiers and legislators, including Washington, Knox, Hamilton, and John Adams, desiring to eliminate America's wartime reliance on foreign engineers and artillerists urged the creation of, of an institution devoted to the arts and sciences of warfare. President Thomas Jefferson signed legislation establishing the United States Military Academy in 1802. He took this action after ensuring that those attending the academy would be representative of a de democratic society. Colonel Sylvanus Thayer, the father of the Military Academy, served as a superintendent from 1817 to 1833. He upgraded academic standards instilled military discipline and emphasized honorable conduct. Among our young nation's need for engineers, Thayer made civil engineering the foundation of the curriculum. For the first half century, U.S. Military Academy graduates were largely responsible for the construction of the bulk of the nation's initial railway lines, bridges, harbors, and roads. After gaining experience in national recognition, during the Mexican and Indian Wars, West Point graduates dominated the highest ranks of both sides during the Civil War. Academy graduates headed by generals such as Grant, Lee, Sherman, and Jackson set high standards of military leadership for both the North and the South. The development of other technical schools in the post-Civil War period allowed for West Point to broaden its curriculum beyond a strict civil engineering focus. Following the creation of the Army Postgraduate Command and Staff Schools, the Military Academy came to be viewed as the first step in a continuing Army education. In World War I, Academy graduates again distinguished themselves on the battlefield. After the war, Superintendent Douglas MacArthur sought to, sought to diversify the academic curriculum. In recognition of the intense physical demands of modern warfare, MacArthur pushed for major changes in the physical fitness and intramural athletic programs. Every cadet and athlete became an important goal. Additionally, the cadet management of the honor system, long an unofficial tradition, was formalized with the creation of the Cadet Honor Committee. Eisenhower, MacArthur, Bradley, Arnold, Clark, Patton, Stilwell, and Wainwright were among the impressive array of Academy graduates who met the challenge of leadership in the Second World War. Post-war period again saw sweeping revisions to the West Point curriculum, resulting in the dramatic developments of science and technology, the increasing need to understand other cultures, and the rising level of general education in the Army. In 1964, President Johnson signed legislation increasing the strength of the Corps of Cadets from 2,529 to 4,417, more recently reduced to 4,000. To keep up with the growth of the Corps, the, a major expansion of facilities began shortly thereafter. Another significant development at West Point came when enrollment was opened to women in 1976. 62 women graduated in the class of 1980 to include Andrea Holland, Rhodes Scholar, just as women are a vital and integral part of the U.S. Army, so they are at West Point. In the recent decade, decades, the Academy's curricular structure was mark, markedly changed to permit cadets in, to major in any one of more than a dozen fields, including wide range of subjects from scientists to the humanities. 
So that is West Point, my friends. I could go, I mean, you could get way more detail for that, of course, but uh, I think that was short, brief. It gives everybody a nice, uh, good uh, definition of West Point and the United States Military Academy. Now, now this is the academy for the Army, uh, and the, the Air Force has their own academy in Colorado. The Navy has their own academy in Annapolis, and the United States Marines go to Annapolis uh, with the Navy, as they are part of the Department of the Navy. So that is pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty neat that uh, we have pretty much uh, three academies for all three of the major, or for the four major, uh, for the three major branches of service as far as Space Force, who knows? Maybe they'll eventually have their own academy somewhere, right? Maybe it'll be in Florida. You know, could, could be, right? That's where uh, Cape Canaveral's at. So <laughs> wherever the main NASA stuff is at, I don't know. You never know. But anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is the coin I present to you today and a little bit of brief history of West Point. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like the history on Monday segments, uh, please let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll keep doing them week after week. Uh, I enjoy doing it because I, I get to learn a little bit more of things I didn't learn. I get to do some research, and then I get to tell you it all. And then I, and then you know, you know, next week it'll be on a totally different subject that won't may not even be related to anything like this. It could be a totally different uh, subject. So hopefully we can find we can keep this going, and we can all teach each other cool things. But with that, let me go ahead and zoom back out so we can say goodbye. So thank you all very much. I really appreciate everything as always. And I, w I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Uh, there will probably be no video this Wednesday, uh, but I am thinking of doing a live testing. So if you see me go live, come on over and hang out and we'll just test it out and see how everything looks and we'll just play around and see if we can get everything good to go. So maybe I can eventually start doing the Libertads in the book and do some other cool live segments uh, and come up with some cool plans and have some fun. But other than that, uh, most likely I won't have another video out till Friday. So with that, uh, enjoy your week and I will see you all soon. So with that, aloha. And mahalo.